and it is well with liberty and justice for all. Next on this evening's agenda is adjustments to the agenda. I have two items I need to add an additional athletic fee position and a co curricular nomination. Um, both under new business? Correct. And we can add that to uh, B, 11B. Other adjustments to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of the November school board minutes. Uh, there were two um, sets of minutes, one from November 10th, which was a regular meeting, and one from the 17th of November, which was a special meeting. John, I have a comment? Yep. In reference to the uh, Meeting, I believe it was November 10th. The school board went into executive session. I recused myself. The board came out of executive session into public session and took a vote on an item that says special school board action. I'm disappointed that I wasn't informed that we were going to be back into open session for the public to be involved. I had left the building. I had gone directly home. I lived within five minutes of the building. Nobody tried to contact me to invite me to come back to discuss this item. Um, I feel that the people who voted to put me in this chair to represent them was not adequately represented at that time, and I would hope that this would not happen again. And if the board is going to go into executive session, I think that they should state that when they come out, they will not go into public session and have an item on the agenda unless they inform the public. Thank you. Other comments? Do you just want to state for the people who are listening what that item was, that in public session? Um, do you have that in front of you, Beth? Yeah. It just, when we re-entered public session, which we are required to do after any executive session, before um, adjourning, there was a motion to add a special school board action to tonight's agenda. And then it, that was it, just to add an item to tonight's agenda. Okay. The, uh, the fact also is that um, agenda items can be added uh, at, at virtually any time um, prior to the, to the meeting. Um, other adjustments or corrections to the uh, minutes of the minutes? Okay. Um, moving on to the next agenda item, uh, comments by uh, the high school representatives. Good evening. I'm uh, Jeff Butterworth. I'm a senior at Cape Elizabeth High School, one of the school board representatives. And uh, regretfully, Alicia Chang, the other representative, a junior uh, at the high school, could not be here this evening. <clears throat> um, there aren't too many uh, bad issues that are going on at the high school right now. So once again, it's going to be good news and uh, just information on uh, what we're trying to do to uh, increase the general morale. Uh, the SAC decided a while ago, near the beginning of the year, on a school unity project of spirit days, uh, one that was uh, introduced in the middle school uh, for a week. Uh, what we will do is uh, a few times a month, maybe two or three times, we will announce a day uh, in which students can dress up uh, as uh, whatever the theme may be and uh, just participate in a, in a greater uh, unity of the school. Uh, the two that we've had so far uh, were uh, instigated by Halloween, of course, which is to wear any sort of costume to school. It's not much guidelines. And uh, two Fridays ago, we had uh, what would be called a chill day, which is to wear anything, the most comfortable, warmest uh, item of clothing that you have in the house. It doesn't have to be formal or anything. Uh, this Friday, we have coming up a dress is your favorite band member day, which is any, any um, 
popular band or a professional music group uh, in the entertainment industry. You can dress as they normally would or just, just to uh, create a statement about your own personal favorites. Um, next we have uh, the success of the fall show. I thought I'd talk about uh, the three stacks of high variety went very well. Uh, we packed the theaters both nights. Most students and audience members were wishing that there could have been a third and a fourth presentation, but uh, regretfully we were only able to do the two. Uh, that went very well though, everyone was pleased. Uh, all the students and the audience were, were very happy with it. Uh, the one acts are coming up, more news from the theater department. Uh, the, the one acts are typically a uh, production that is um, created during the winter and throughout the spring season and they will be competing in several different competitions throughout Maine um, later on in the spring. Uh, in other issues, there is a band concert uh, of the Wind Symphony, the Symphonic Band, the Mixed Chorus, and the Select Choir um, on December 14th at 7.30 p.m. in the high school auditorium. The admission will be free with a ticket which can be, um, which can be received from the office or from the music department. Uh, in other news, sports. Uh, sports have just started, the winter sports. Hockey, um, we, were, we were glad to see, just won their past game against Greeley at NYA 11-5. to It's a good start to the season. Uh, and basketball also won their first two. Um, our boys basketball won their first two. The girls, unfortunately, have lost their first two, but there's room for, there's room for change throughout the season. Uh, indoor track also just started uh, this past Monday and we hope to be seeing more uh, from them with a larger team this year and better use of the facilities um, at USM uh, with the indoor field house at USM and Gorham rather than having to use the expo for their, uh, for their competitions. So there's no more news from the high school. I'm glad that it could have been, that it was all beneficial news. Is there any question that you may have? Questions for Jeff? Uh, just a comment, we actually like to hear good things. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, but I did have a question. Uh, we, we were going around uh, last spring, uh, and there was uh, some resolution to uh, the parking issues at the high school. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sense of how that's going? Um, we haven't had any recent complaints. I know that the, uh, the issue wasn't um, resolved in, in the fashions that some people had uh, created designs for. Right now we have the senior lot, uh, which is the upper parking lot next to the bus lot, which is available mostly to seniors. Uh, I, don't think there's, I don't think there are any repercussions uh, from the upper class uh, for any, any underclassman that tries to park there. But we are also able to use the bus lot uh, to a certain extent, uh, using the spaces uh, between the hill and the buses. And the lower lot is available for, uh, for underclassmen with more pool spaces being added this year. Do you get much participation in these theme days? Oh yeah, oh yes, Is yes. it well received? Yeah, it's very well received. Uh, most of the students participate. It's, it's fun, I suppose, for, for most of the people in the high school. And I appreciate your dress code as depicted this evening. Ah, well, thank you very much. I figured you all have to dress up. Why shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Other questions? Uh, uh, Jeff, I did get to see the play. Congratulations to uh, you and to Ben Weaver, yep. uh, the author of the play, and uh, and the staff and um, and uh, the cast. It was it was very ent very entertaining, a very oh. enjoyable evening. Thank you very much. I'll pass on your congratulations to the uh, rest of the cast. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Comments uh, from our middle school representatives. I'm Amelia Wiggins. Um, and I'm Marianne Chapman. Uh, we don't have much for you this month. Uh, the November, the December elections for the fifth graders um, has, have begun. The primary elections were today. And there will be speeches next Thursday, actually this Thursday. And um, they will be voting on Friday. The, there is an upcoming dance for the seventh and eighth graders um, on the 18th. Um, the student council went to Greeley and heard speaker Mark Brown, and we all we all 
brainstormed with other um, student councils from around the state and came up with some great ideas for helping the schools. There were two speakers for, in the science, for science classes. They held demonstrations of experiments and stuff, and it was really great for the all the students to see. Um, there was a food drive for the, <laughs> for the, um, st the student council held a food drive, um, and it was, we had a lot of donations of food. It was really great. Uh, we got a letter from uh, <laughs> WMGX, and they, were, they really appreciated our help. Um, there's a band and chorus concert that's coming up, and that's tomorrow night, and um, everyone's pretty much getting ready for that. It's, I think it's fifth through eighth. Um, there's auditions for the school play, Oz, that are going on this week, and Mr. Price is um, doing that. There was some speakers from the main Audubon who came to the school. I wasn't there because I was at um, Kiev, but a lot, he, he came and talked to some grades about um, Maine Audubon and what, was that, what that was all about. And um, the seventh grade outdoor experience this year was Cave, which was a new camp similar to Chowanke. We did some sort of things. And I've been talking to students around school, and it was just a wonderful experience, I think, for everyone. Um, we really had a good time and learned a lot. There were um, basically five classes, some were on one was on drugs and alcohol, relationships, um, adventure, which was like mountain, uh, rock wall climbing and stuff like that. And solo, which was just kind of time to be with yourself and reflect on the day. Um, and so that was, it went really well, and I think everyone pretty much learned a lot. Uh, the report cards went out last Friday for everyone except the seventh grade who were away. And we're getting ours on fr uh, this Friday. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, are there any questions? Questions? You must have good will because you've had such wonderful weather. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. The next, under, next item on the agenda is a special school board action and that would require a motion. Uh, I, I would move that, uh, are we going to be reading that letter into the record? What letter? Um, I'm not sure what time I'm saying. There's only one letter. It would be germane to the special school board action. The letter that I wrote? Yeah. No. <coughs> what kind of... And I'm unclear as to how to proceed on this. What is the motion to proceed with the action or the motion... Um, on the agenda is a special school board action. Um, what is required is, is basically a motion um, from a board member if there's an action to be taken. The request? Kevin. Yes. Um, in view of the ongoing uh, Anne Ridge versus school department situation, it has become <coughs> increasingly difficult and distracting to conduct the business of this board, in my view, with the uh, concept of it's the kids that we hear about. Accordingly, I would move that the board re reluctantly request uh, the resignation of board member John Ridge in view of a clear conflict of interest situation. With that motion, is there a second? Second. Jennifer. Discussion. Beth? I'll just say as a board member, um, again, it is uh, not a personal situation at all. It's very difficult um, since the law or the statute is very unclear about what a conflict of interest is. 
Basically, it just states that a school board member's spouse cannot be employed by the system, and it leaves it there. And I think it's really important that we work with um, the legislature to get that statute changed to broaden that definition of what a conflict of interest is. My feeling is that it was the intent when they put that uh, statue in that a board member's spouse could not work for the system because there would be a financial relationship there, that that intent would cover a situation that we are in now with a board member's spouse being involved in a legal action that will be very expensive to the school system. Um, it is covered by insurance, but it could be as much as $150,000 to $200,000 to defend ourselves. Um, it is a, a very significant financial, um, financial situation the board is in. So it's for those reasons and nothing personal that um, I as a board member would say that this is clearly a conflict of interest and one that needs to be um, stepped away from. Other discussion? Uh, the school board has the major duties of dealing with budgetary issues and uh, dealing with personnel and uh, the responsibilities uh, therein. Uh, I think this lawsuit has put us in a very difficult situation where the two major areas that we have to deal with on all different levels are being uh, somewhat poisoned by this perceived uh, conflict of interest. Uh, as, as Beth stated, uh, the conflict of interest uh, officially is only for those board members that might have a, a spouse being employed in the district. Uh, although, uh, if, if this type of situation that exists right now, which is, is apparently very unusual, if this is not a conflict of interest, I can't imagine what else uh, ever would be. Uh, so it's made uh, for some uncomfortable discussions. Uh, obviously, I think I'm not comfortable with this discussion right now, uh, but I would support the, the motion. Other comments, other discussion? Um, <clears throat> I'll go. I sort of wrote something out, and it will be easier for me to read it. Um, the issue of whether John Ridge's continued participation on the school board is a conflict is not a personal one regarding John, and please don't take it as such. It arises directly from his intimate relationship to the litigant, his wife, Ann Ridge. Because through that relationship, John has the potential to benefit financially from this lawsuit. Uh, neither is it an issue of whether uh, Ann Ridge may bring a lawsuit against the school department. Um, although she's been uh, previously unsuccessful in both her claim against the school department before the Human Rights Commission and in her action against the union before the Maine Labor Relations Board. Um, despite the fact that neither of those groups <coughs> accepted her arguments as supported in fact, she has every right to bring a lawsuit against the school department in federal court. The issue with which I'm concerned is that even though it is unclear as to whether an illegal conflict of interest exists in this situation, clearly the appearance of such a conflict exists. And this conflict exists simply because John Ridge is not only a member of the school board of the Cape Elizabeth School Department, but at the same time has the potential to benefit financially from a legal action currently pending against the same school department on which he serves. As a board, one of our major responsibilities is to develop policy. At times, questions are raised by John which give rise to the perception and subsequent distraction that the time being taken to ask and answer those questions is not necessarily to, to address the school department's policy issues, but rather to fur further a personal legal position. Most of the work of the school board involves personal, uh, personnel and financial issues, both of which are major components of this pending lawsuit. Uh, I was elected to represent the residents of Cape Elizabeth and to help to conduct the business of running and improving our school system. As much as I like John Ridge and appreciate the points he often makes and his contribution to the school board, I must consider the appearance that the board is conducting not only the public's business but John's personal business as well. The existence of such a confusion of interests serves only to hinder the effectiveness of the board as a whole. 
I would therefore ask John to seriously consider choosing which is more important to him, his service to the Cape Elizabeth School Board or the pursuit of the law school against the school department. Continuing both would be a disservice not only to this board, but to this community as well. And I therefore would support a motion to ask for his resignation. Marie. Um, <clears throat> it's unfortunate that we are at this point once again <clears throat> discussing what we all believe to be a real conflict of interest. Personally, I believe under other circumstances, John could be a very positive contributor to this board. However, the situation we are confronted with raises too many questions, too much doubt, and too much uncertainty. As a board, we are not functioning at the level that we should be. Too often, I find that we are engaged in discussions regarding John's motives, which may indeed be legitimate. However, the questions won't go away. To be effective, he can't we can't continually have these doubts hanging over us. We spend too much time in closed meetings discussing the Anne Ridge issue, which is time that we should be spending on school issues. The one thing this is not about is the lawsuit itself, regardless of the amount of time and money it's costing the school system. What it is about, however, is the conflict which exists when the board finds itself having to separate, to having to have separate meetings without John, and then to just to restrict his participation in certain matters, when when he was elected, the expectation of the voters was that he would be able to function as a full-time board member, participating and contributing on all board issues. Unfortunately, this is not the case today. I believe the fair and honorable thing to do would be to offer your resignation and allow someone else to sit on this board who has no baggage, isn't surrounded by conflict, and will allow this board to function and interact without the constraints, the conflicts, and the distractions that we currently operate under. Are there other comments from the board? Yes. The motion I have offered tonight pains me greatly. It has taken a uh, considerable toll <laughs> in my sleeping time for quite some time. I had hoped that this matter would be resolved by the findings of the Human Rights Commission and the State Labor Relations Board, both of which declined the complaint. However, on the other hand, if they had agreed to reinstate Mrs. Ridge, that would have in fact created the conflict which would have led to a resolution of the current situation. However, having both of those organizations deny the claim and then finding ourselves sued in federal court, uh, my opinion of letting this take its course began to change dramatically. And I look at the difference between seeking uh, reappointment to your job and back salaries versus the wide variety of damages and compensations that are requested in the legal um, documents filed with the federal court. To me, this clearly presents, at the very least, the appearance of a conflict of interest. I've always felt that it was a conflict of interest, but I had hoped that it would be resolved. Clearly, it is not going to be readily resolved. I asked you to elect me to the school board so that I could move the school system forward. I have a little sign that flashes in front of my eyes occasionally that reminds me, it's the kids, stupid. I'm spending entirely too much time. It is personally distracting to me, and it is very clearly in my mind a conflict of interest, and it is for those reasons that I have uh, offered this motion. I would like to say that I have the utmost respect for John as an individual and as a member of this community. One thing has nothing to do with the other. Are there other comments uh, from the board? Or other comments, um, anyone from the audience wish to make a comment? Um, as chair of the board, and from the perspective of chair, um, this is a matter that has continued to provide a very significant distraction to this board. 
It's been a diversion away from our mission to continuously improving education for the students in Cape Elizabeth. I'm going to steer clear of legal interpretation and arguments. I choose instead to address this issue as one begging a review with use of uh, a sense of integrity and some, just some common sense. A few things seem very clear to me and I'd like to identify those to you. One, John Ridge has been elected and has served adequately and satisfactorily, this current issue aside, as a school board member. He's an active contributor to the community and this is not a personal issue. Secondly, John Ridge is the husband of Ann Ridge who has in succession filed a complaint against the school board of Cape Elizabeth as well as a complaint against the Teachers Association of Cape Elizabeth, both of which were found to be without merit and they were subsequently dismissed. Thirdly, despite dismissal of Ann Ridge's complaints by both the Maine Human Rights Commission and the Maine Human Labor Relations Board, Ann Ridge has filed, as is her right, a federal suit against and is seeking damages from the Cape Elizabeth School Board the very board that her husband, John Ridge, now sits on. Fourth, compensatory or other monetary damages, if to be awarded by a court, would benefit both Ann Ridge and John Ridge. That certainly fits my definition of a conflict of interest, plain and simple. Fifth, more often than not, and as mentioned by other members here, the tough issues that this board deals with the ones that we're regularly required to grapple with involve either personnel actions or money. It's one of the two. Any discussion involving these two topics bear relationship either directly or indirectly to the Ridge suit. Lastly, as with any conflict of interest, not only does it create bias for the individual with the conflict, it also places an unfair burden on those who must try to, in quotes, work around the conflict. And despite what I feel to be a very sincere effort on this board, the updates that have been provided, the letter I think that Kevin was referring to earlier was a letter that I had written to John Ridge on, I believe, November 14th or somewhere thereabouts, advising him to, uh, to expect that this action would be taken. So. Um, this agenda item is, is no surprise to anyone. Despite what I feel to be a sincere effort on the part of the board to work around the conflict, it has been an arduous task. We have tried to do it. The conflict interferes with so very many functions of this board and issues that this board deals with. The conflict of interest has proven to be an impediment to this board's work to accomplish what we have set in front of us as a very, very aggressive set of goals for this year. And it's for that reason, and the reasons that I've specified, uh, that I too would support a motion to request John Ridge's resignation. I think it's common sense and integrity that dictate the right thing to do is for John to resign. John, I'd like to make a few comments, if yes. I may. Uh, first, I'd just like to draw attention to two things that you've repeated twice in reference to no merit. If you've read both of the findings, neither one of the findings have the words no merit. There had to have been merit for them to have gone forward, and I'll say no more about that. I invite you, if you like to read them, I can obtain the, the findings for you. Uh, I think the public needs some comments from me in reference to this whole situation. I ran for the school board primarily to continue the excellence of this program in the town. I have been a uh, resident out here for over 35 years. And I ran on the basis of the budget and wanting to get involved in that in, in terms of having good, clear representation for that percentage of the public that pays the taxes that doesn't, they don't have people in the school system, they don't have children in the school system. I didn't think at the time that there was fair representation on this board for those people. And they approached me. They asked me to pick up the gauntlet and run, and I did. The other thing I had in my mind was, in reference, I knew that Dr. Moles was going to be uh, retiring and that we would need to replace her with uh, a superb individual. We tried twice and failed on two occasions to come to that conclusion, for whatever the reasons were. I wanted to be on board so that I could pursue that and have an individual sitting in her chair 
that would lead the rest of this uh, school department in the future. I think most of you know how I've supported the teachers as well as the administrators over these past 18 months. I was very proud to be on the uh, committee that put the contract together for three years, sat in a room with one teacher who made the comment, I don't like confrontation, and this has been an excellent, and I'm very pleased to say, a very smooth contract negotiation. George was on it, and Charlie was on it. So I feel that those are fellows, you know, in my cap in reference to being able to deal with the, the union's reference to giving them good representation. There hasn't been one item on the agenda since I've been on this board that I haven't been able to vote on. The only item that I do is I recuse myself when they go into executive session to discuss the situation referenced by <coughs> my wife, Ann Ridge. You heard me earlier in the evening make reference to the school, the school board going into executive session and for a specific purpose, and they came out and they took a vote, supposedly for the public to be present. I was not informed of that. I was at home. As I said earlier, I could have been back here in five minutes. Some of the other areas that I've been involved in, basically uh, the selection of Common. I was very pleased to be involved in that. He's a superb individual to be functioning in his position. And same with uh, Carla. I was involved in that, and I feel that I've done uh, and, and presented good contributions at all these different board meetings. I personally feel that I can represent the people of the town and there's no conflict. There's a letter here from the uh, Duke Albanese, and it says right in it that there's no conflict of interest. And if there's anything under common law, then, the, then they should research it. As of today, when I spoke with my attorney, he in turn had a conversation, I think, with Mr. Pringle. No common law had been brought forward. Also, I've checked the town charter. It says that an individual can only be removed in case they're convicted of a felony. I feel that I'm an outstanding citizen in this town. I've contributed over the years, and I wish to continue. There's been some comments by a few of the school board members in reference to items, and I'm not clear. I, I wish they would be specific if there was something that came up that maybe they felt uncomfortable with in reference to a discussion that how it pertains the taxpayers of this town. So I feel that I can sit here and represent the citizens of the town, keep an open mind, be fair, let this process go forward in the courts that it's already been served on the town, and when it comes time to be discussed in executive session, I will recuse myself. If it comes up in the budget and it's specifically said, it's referenced to something, I will recuse myself. So I look for support of the citizens and the community. I wish to continue to serve you, and at this time it is not my intention to resign. Thank you. Other comments? I just want to um, provide some clarification. I, I think um, Mr. Ridge references um, two items, one of which is a uh, response that was received from the commissioner. Um, and I think it's important. Uh, I have that letter in front of me. It says that the, que the question that you pose and the facts given do not appear to present <coughs> conflict of interest under 20-A MRSA subsection 1002. Nonetheless, the circumstances described may create a conflict of interest under the common law, i.e., that is, court-made law. The other, in terms of um, an agenda item uh, coming from executive session, um, we don't always know when we go into executive session whether or not there will be another item for, um, for the public docket. Um, so uh, leaving, uh, even after recruit, uh, um, uh, excusing oneself from uh, executive session doesn't guarantee that there will not be uh, a public matter. Um, and it certainly was not planned, it just so happened. Um, because of that and because this agenda item was to be on uh, this meeting, this public meeting, I specifically wrote a letter to John as the chair. Um, in it, it says, I'm writing this letter in the wake of the news of the complaint of the case of Ann Ridge versus the Cape Elizabeth School Department. Um, after now, it has finally been served. It was actually, it was filed but not served. As you know, the school board met in executive session last week to discuss the lawsuit, the impact that it will have going forward on the school department. Clearly, the lawsuit 
will involve expenditure of much time and effort on the part of the school personnel. Perhaps more importantly, it will continue to divert us from our important mission of educating students. John, we have discussed in the past the concerns that board members have about your continued participation as a member of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. Because of your responsibilities as a board member and your tie to the lawsuit, strong feelings have been expressed that a clear and unavoidable conflict of interest exists. I write to you and hope that now that the lawsuit has been served and you have had more time to consider this issue, you will decide to resign your position as a member of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. This is obviously your decision alone to make, but it would not surprise me if a public motion were made at our upcoming school board meeting to formally request your resignation. I mention this so that you sim I mention this simply so that you are not blindsided at the meeting and so that you will have a chance to think about this ahead of time. In closing, let me reiterate what I think has been stated many times before during the course of this matter. This is not an issue involving John Ridge as board member or John Ridge as a person. It is only about your relationship to the pending lawsuit and the impact that this relation has on the functioning of the board and the best interests of the school department. And it's signed by me. Yes. Would, would, you, would, you please, would you come to the podium and identify yourself, please? <clears throat> My name is Bob Bay Ross. I live down on Maiden Cove. I've been a resident for many years. My question is what happens after this meeting? Uh, I, understand, I understand your question, I think. You're asking him to resign. If he doesn't resign, what happens? The, the uh, motion that's on, that is in front of us right now is uh, one that would have the school board request John's resignation. If he, if he does not wish to do so, um, I don't know that there is uh, a recall. Um, that was my question. There's not a provision for recall. What is the next step? Is there some kind of a mechanism to remove a school board member? One of, one of the, um, there is not that I know of. You have to amend the town charter. There are no recall provisions in the town charter. So the town charter would have to be amended and I think you have to appoint a charter commission in order to amend the town charter. Thank you for the explanation. Are there other um, comments from the audience? Or from the board? Uh, I have one quick comment. Um, John, I will agree with you in all those fine things that you have said you've done, and that reiterates, I think, our position that we have no issue at all with you, personally, or as a board member. Um, that the issue stems solely from your potential financial gain in a lawsuit, and that, to me, is a conflict. Um, secondly, uh, you seem to sort of indicate that we should um, pursue getting some sort of judgment declaring uh, a conflict of interest based on common law. <coughs> and that's a judgment call on our part that costs a lot of money. Um, and it's, it requires a lot of energy on our part that, I mean, not only do I do this business, but I have three children at home, and I have two parents who are 85 years old and live two hours away, and it's just one more thing that is on my plate. Um, that I feel as a volunteer doing this job, I don't feel I should be required to add to. So. Any other comments? Seeing none, uh, then I would uh, like to call for a vote on the motion. Um, all those in favor? Six. Six. All those opposed, oh. one. I think um, what I'd like to do is to take a five minute recess and we'll, we'll come back to this meeting.
make. I'll go check. Yes. Oh, um, super call there. school. Superintendent yeah. Weatherby can call school. She's my pet. I, th I think we're on the air. Hold on. Yeah, that'd be good. I'd like to um, uh, call the meeting to order again. Um, I, I guess I would offer, again, as, as chair of this board, I would offer um, only a statement of, of uh, disappointment uh, that, um, that John uh, has responded to our request in the way that he has. Certainly that his, is his right, and uh, my hope is um, that he will reconsider. I'd like to move on now um, to item six on our agenda communications. Are there communications this evening? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'm going to move on to the superintendent's report. Our first item tonight is the technology plan, the rolling technology plan, and Gary Lenoy is here to explain it. From last month. I kind of gave you the annual technology report last month at the school board workshop. So basically what I'm focusing on tonight is the uh, technology plan. And we've kind of combined it and called it a town school. There are some town elements to this plan. And we're moving towards the one town concept. And the, the kinds of things that we're doing with technology and the networking can bring us closer together. Um, I'm just going to, you all received this in your school board packet. And you've, you've all had a chance to look it over. And I'm just going to briefly touch on it and review and then answer any questions about it. That, that's kind of the game plan. Um, there are some categories, and I've included 9899, which is really this year and three years out. And with technology, sometimes it's tough to predict what's going to happen three years out. That's why we're really calling this a, a revolving plan, so that probably I'll be coming back to you next year and, and revising what we've done this year and what we've what we, whatever we do next year and say, okay, from that point, this is what we knew, need to do uh, a year or two or three out. So that's how it will work. So you'll see me annually to do this. Um, one of the things that's worked really, really well is the Technology Steering Committee. It has a diverse group of people from the community, from the schools, from administration, school board representatives, and town representatives. And that's been kind of the, the guiding uh, group that takes a look at all of the things that are happening with technology in the district and helps us move forward. We establish some standards in that group. We try to follow through and, and make those things happen. So this technology steering committee we want to see continue. The only thing that we'd like to do a little bit better is to kind of communicate the activities that we do, both building-wide um, and uh, system-wide those kinds of things maybe we haven't done as well in the past. We also want to work in concert with the town's technology plan. Networking is the, the big issue. When we started our technology plan uh, three years ago, we're in our, currently in our fourth year, networking was there, it was listed, but we weren't networked. Um, computers were standalone things. They were just on teacher's desks in some cases, some, in some cases not even on teacher's desks. Networking brings us together as a community. Uh, I can remember one or two teachers, actually several teachers, saying to me towards the end of the last school year, one of the best things that happened to us is having email right directly in the classroom so that they can communicate 
to those people that are down in the next building uh, that you may not see that often, and you can do it at your, you know, when you want to. Uh, so, and networking has made that happen. We've started connecting all of our buildings together, school and town buildings, and we've built a fiber highway that I mentioned last month. And what we really need to do now is get the connection, get the on-ramp to that. Uh, we're looking at exploring options and finding out what way can we provide uh, fast internet access for our schools and for the town buildings and exploring different options in there. I, since last month, I may have mentioned that the, the PUC, which Public Utility Commission for the State of Maine, uh, was investigating ways through the Maine State Library Network of providing higher access speeds to schools and to libraries in the state. Well, they've actually approved that, and we should be at some, some date very, very soon receiving an application to um, take advantage of that. And we, where we are already connected, where the fibers are, are there, we, we need to get our on-ramps taken care of, but we could potentially get a T T1 line for this school district that we can take advantage of this year. So that's coming up, hopefully, this spring. So we will have our, our high-speed access at a cost of uh, uh, hardware to get the connections installed, but T1 lines cost anywhere from 700 up a month, depending on where you are from the, uh, the, the main connections. We'll be getting that for the duration of the main state library network, which is June 2000, for no cost. So we get a chance to try it out, see how it's going to work, and see how it's going to work for us uh, at not incurring those monthly fees. We also need to break down our network. There's things in here called switches and routers. Basically, we built a, a network and put everything all together, and it's not, not efficient or is not as efficient as it could be. Some of these other devices will, will help take care of that for us. Um, as far as hardware goes, we've been fortunate in, in being able to upgrade about 40 computers per year. If we look at our install base right now, that's about 13% of our install base. So that's a long turnover time to get um, to where we would be completely replacing some of our older technology. So you'll notice in the, the, the three upcoming budget years, we've upgraded to 50 computers per year. And with the cost of technology coming down, that may not cost us more dollar-wise, but will allow us to upgrade more computers. I've also spelled out where we're targeting some of our technology. We've uh, opted to upgrade labs each year, and the Pond Cove had the oldest technology, the oldest computer lab, that was replaced this year. Next year, it should be the middle school's turn and then the high school. We should get on a revolving cycle like that. Um, we also need to upgrade administrative office and other areas as needed. Uh, if we replace 50 computers per year, that's about 16% of our install base. We will also not throw out some of this older technology. We'll recycle that, put that in classrooms as maybe a second machine that people could do some word processing on and those kinds of things. So we're going to use the older technology until it dies, um, but we need the, the faster technology where it's used the most in our labs, and we need to constantly upgrade that. The, there's a new category listed here that wasn't in the earlier plan. It was an administrative software category, but we've just kind of broke it down generally into software. And the technology committee would look like, look, like to look at establishing some standards so that when we're passing files around the district, um, we're all using the same type of software. And that isn't happening as much now, but we want to work towards that. I also need to get a better feel for where we are as far as our licensing district-wide. So that's going to happen this year, and we want to implement some of the software standards as we move out. And we also want to constantly maintain that software. Um, the software that we buy now, I'm not, going to, I'm not saying that we need to constantly replace it each and every year, but when we buy a piece of software, we need to make sure that we're taking advantage of the, of the upgrades that come periodically with that. On the second page, staffing. I currently am on a teacher's contract and work 20 extra days, and I'm finding that that's not enough to do the kinds of things that we want to do. I'm actually finding that it, even, 
even the days that I am here, there's, there's usually a great big long list of stuff that I need to get to and just not enough time in the day to deal with the, all, the, all the issues that, that are um, happening. It's good that people are saying that they can't print, they can't get to the network, they can't use their email, but it's my job to make sure that those things don't happen or happen very um, infrequently. And I'm finding that I can't do it by myself with, with all of the technology that we have in the district. So probably the biggest increase, or actually Pauline and I looked at this, maybe the only increase that you'll see in the technology budget um, might come from uh, requesting a, a technical support person for the district. So there's some staffing in there uh, for increasing my work here a little bit a little bit, extending that a little bit longer and hiring another person year round so that there'd be a second person um, to run between the three buildings in the district. And in the future years, possibly some more. As we grow and expand, our technology gets uh, more complex. We have a lot of servers, a lot of printers, a lot of computers that need attention, need care and feeding, and we may need some additional personnel as we move out into the um, following years. Staff development. Staff development is, is real important. We want our teachers to be fully trained and to be technology, technologically literate. I showed you the rubrics last month as to where people are. We want to move people to the, at least the, the mastery level so that everyone feels comfortable doing all of the stuff that we need to do day to day on technology, to be able to do our word processing, our email, use the internet with our classes. So we need to make sure that staff development is ongoing. We've talked in the technology committee about looking at some basic levels of staff development not being offered after a while. In other words, we, we would assume that with all the work that we've done by the year 2000 or, or so, that some of the, the real, real basic rudimentary training, uh, we would hope people would be, on, be beyond that so that we could go and, and train on other things. So that's what that last statement in the staff development deals with. Our technology curriculum. Technology standards are really, they're not a pull-out section of the main learning results. They're uh, kind of incorporated in many different areas. We're, we've got a committee that's putting together some standards that we think we can put besides the other eight content areas. Even though that we are integrated, within all those other areas, there are some basic skills that we want our students to have as they progress through the, the grades. And we're trying to define those skills right now. And hopefully, before the end of this year or early next year, I'll be able to have those to, to give to you. Um, we had a, a committee meeting just, uh, just this past week, and we've made some good progress on that. One of the big areas and the new areas that wasn't in the earlier plan, web development, we, we didn't have web servers, we didn't have some of the things that we now do have. Um, this year we did purchase a computer that is now currently a web server and thanks to the help of Wendy Derzewick at the Pond Cove Lab who is also helping to maintain the town website, we have a school website up. So if anyone wants to go to www.cape.k12.me.us, that is our school web page. The content, the basic outline is there, and we hope to make that grow and be a tool that teachers can use, students can use. Uh, we hope to start to do some of the business on the, of the school on the web. Uh, forms like, simple things like maintenance requests, fill out the form and it gets emailed to the appropriate person, those kinds of things. Um, and that's gonna even expand as we go out. We're looking at how we can do e-commerce, and the town is really interested in that, paying taxes eventually on the web. Um, people buy things with credit cards uh, all over the web right now, Amazon.com, one of the biggest bookstores around. Um, we want to start doing some of our, the town business and potentially the school business on the web. And that's what this plan is starting to do. We've kind of picked, Sue and I haven't talked a lot about this, maybe community services as a, maybe a pilot project to begin registrations uh, next year. And we're gonna, she knows, she's aware of this, but we just haven't sat down and talked about all the details about this. 
But those are the kinds of things that we want to begin to do, and it will only grow from there. So that is uh, our new revised revolving technology plan. This is where we would like to go. I think we've got a real good start. Um, four years ago, five years ago, we had Apple IIe labs in the middle school. We did not have computers on, in every teacher's classroom. We were not networked. We are there now. So we've made some big uh, leaps over these last four years. And we still have some steps to go. And I think uh, this plan will get us there. Questions or comments? Would you explain a little bit about the technician, since that's the one new piece of money in the budget? We've sort of talked about it, but it's kind of jagged to some extent. I find that my title is a technology coordinator. I'm finding that I'm spending more and more of my time doing some of the nitty-gritty technician type stuff, uh, fixing printers, installing software, troubleshooting, those kinds of things. And I'm wondering if that's the best use of, of my time and the money that you're paying me. We need technology curriculum. We need staff development. There's a lot of other areas that I could be spending my time on that I can't because if you can't print or if the email system's down, those things got to be taken care of. Um, I went to a conference in New Hampshire one day this fall, and one of the servers in this building went down, which cut off some of the town connections to the... Uh, to our regular old business system. There was nobody else in the district that could restore that. I came in the next day and got it up and running, but there is nobody, there is no second person. Um, I think a technical person, a second technician type person um, is warranted with all of our technology that we have. And I think it's, it's we're to the stage where we need that now. Thanks. Is there anyone else? who does this stuff with you? Are you the only, I mean, is there anyone else who's capable of fixing printers and doing this? There stuff? are a couple of ed techs in, uh, in a couple of the, the, uh, the, there's an ed tech in the computer lab in both the middle school and the Pond Cove school. And their job, I mean, when they were hired, they were really hired to be an ed tech in that lab. But the job has evolved and they do a lot of the first level of troubleshooting in the buildings. So there is some of that, but, um, there's a need for, for more. There really is. I've, figures I was looking at recently for uh, support personnel in a corporate type environment, uh, it's usually about one support person for somewhere between 20 and 50 employees. Uh, so if we were to go at the highest point of 50 employees, we would have at least five people doing the support issues that, that, that you have to deal with yourself, it sounds like. Uh, so I would certainly support building that area up. If, right. if we don't support it properly, all of the investment we've made so far is going to fail. Right. Because the technology will do, do no good if it doesn't work. Teachers will become frustrated. Students will become frustrated. So you need that, that level of support there. When it needs to be, when it needs some attention, we need to have somebody that can deal with it. Uh, and I can't always get to, you know, where I need to be in all three buildings every single day. There's just there's too much out there right now. Are, are these ed techs that you talk about in two of the schools, are they capable of doing more work or they need the training to, to do it? There's one of them that would be very capable to do this technology uh, technician type work with some training, but I think she's going to be leaving. So. I have a question, Gary. Have you forecasted what this is going to involve in the budget in a, in a dollar amount, what we can look forward to seeing in your presentation? Pauline and I have talked a little bit about it. Uh, I've talked to other coordinators around the district and around the, the Cumberland County area. And I know Gorham has tried to hire somebody like this at $10 per hour and ran the ad several times and got no takers. Um, so for, I think we're looking at maybe 35 to 40,000 uh, total. Full-time. Right. And the town is offered to do a little bit of the share of this because the town is actually um, going to be benefiting from this too. We are networked together as one town and there's services that need to happen in this building. I don't, I don't, you know, because this is a town computer, I don't not service that. I always work both. Yeah, we're emphasizing the full town. 
time, John, because he's only asking for half time right. for next year. No, full time. Full time for next year. Full time for next year. Half time. In Sorry, a half time the following year, and a half time yeah. the year after right. that. So two in the next three. Right. But I mean, the, that would be still half of what Keith is talking about. Right. Right. And so as we grow, as we move out each year, there's going to be more and more technology too. So we're going to be increasing that. Other comments or questions, Kevin? I certainly appreciate the work you've done on this and uh, look forward to seeing your budget request. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Thanks, Gary. A nice job on this plan. Uh, don't take um, Keith's ratio too serious. <laughs> I can't count on that. <laughs> we had two teachers request sabbatical leaves for next year Jill Bell, a fifth grade teacher, and Gail Parker, a fifth grade teacher. Uh, Jill has decided that she does not wish to do it next year and will delay her plan until the following year. Uh, Gail Parker has followed through, has presented us with her preliminary plan and the sabbatical committee, which is Marie Prager and Nancy Hutton as her building principal. And I will uh, review her plan and make a rec recommendation to the board. Okay. Um, moving on, on January 4th, 1999, we will have a joint meeting with the town council. This will be a joint meeting between the school board and the town council to begin preliminary budget discussions. We'll start the meeting at 6.30 with a dinner in the middle school teacher's lounge, and that will be followed by a tour of the 1930s building, and we'd hope to begin our meeting in earnest at approximately 7.45. And that's all I have. So, the next uh, item on the agenda is the principal's reports, and we'll start with the high school. Peter. Uh, Jeff, for Come is Your Favorite Band Day, is, is it all right if Mr. Ely and I come together as Pavarotti? Is that, uh, <laughs> right. the, I'd like to uh, add to uh, the praise that Jeff already uh, uh, bestowed and, and that was added to by uh, the board chair, uh, kudos for the, the fall play. Uh, first to uh, Dick Mullen, uh, I think having the, the courage and the trust to uh, allow and encourage a, a, a play developed and directed <laughs> and designed completely by students is to be uh, commended. Uh, it was, and, and it worked out beautifully. And to the whole cast and crew of the three stacks of high variety, uh, congratulations and a thank you for uh, two evenings of outstanding entertainment. It was pure fun. And also want to invite you to the concert uh, this uh, Monday evening at 7.30. Uh, two other uh, co-curricular events that have been taking place. If you remember last year uh, at, uh, at budget time, um, we spent uh, some time talking about uh, mock trial. Uh, we were we had volunteer uh, advisors, but we weren't sure uh, whether the uh, uh, the the activity itself was duplicating other activities. Well, uh, as you know uh, from those meetings, mock trial did go forward, and they are uh, meeting with tremendous success. Last Friday, the mock uh, mock trial team uh, advanced to the state final uh, competition by defeating Hampton Academy in Bangor. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, they will compete against St. Dominic's for the Maine State Championship. Uh, the competi competition will take place in the Kennebec County Courthouse in Augusta before a panel of, of three judges, which will include the Chief Justice of the Maine Supreme Court, the Speaker of the House, and the Dean of the Maine Law School. So it should be uh, uh, a wonderful learning experience as well as a good competition. I know a number of parents will be attending this competition. Everyone is, is welcome. Good luck to the uh, mock trial team tomorrow. Uh, in addition, in, a, in related uh, uh, event, uh, speech and debate. Uh, this coming Saturday, uh, CAPE will be hosting the, uh, the Cape uh, Elizabeth Speech and Debate Tournament. We'll be using both the high school and the middle school, uh, one for uh, debate and one for the various speech events, and expect that our teams will be competing with more than uh, approximately 250 students from over two, uh, 25 schools 
from Maine and New Hampshire. Uh, I want to encourage you to feel free to stop by, uh, enjoy a round of debate, uh, some poetry, humor, humorous interpretations, a uh, whole host of other events. I think you'll be impressed with what you see from our students, uh, the, both their thinking skills and uh, oratorical talents. Finally, we uh, hosted, I think, a very successful information evening last night. Uh, thanks to some initiative that uh, Kevin Sweeney took uh, back uh, a month and a half ago, we were able to uh, secure uh, Dr. Bill Dexter, who is the head of the sports medicine department at the University of Southern Maine, and one of the fellows in sports medicine, Dr. Mark Bouchard, who uh, came uh, to the high school last night and presented an information evening on the various dietary supplement and performance enhancing dietary supplements that many of you have probably read about in the news, well, starting back uh, last summer, certainly uh, many articles started appearing, and even in the local papers in, in recent weeks, there have been articles uh, about uh, the various uh, supplements that are available and that some people are encouraging. Uh, they talked to an audience of uh, composed of uh, all of our coaches, uh, middle school and high school health teachers and health professionals, the nurses, uh, social workers. Um, it was a good turnout. Uh, the early feedback that I've received from uh, the participants has been very positive. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed are the spin-off discussions that have started as a result of this, all of which I think will uh, result in various improvements uh, to the way we offer uh, extracurricular sports uh, in, the, in the Cape Elizabeth schools. Um, as I say, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, two uh, presenters uh, were, are experts in the field, have a tremendous background, and were able to give us that first step, uh, which was basic information, which we felt that we were lacking. We, when you read the articles in the paper, it's very short on uh, any kind of objective information. It's just kind of anecdotal reporting on uh, you know, a particular supplement that made me 15 pounds heavier or, or uh, stronger or whatever. And uh, uh, it it uh, was, was very short on objective information, and they provided a lot of that last night, so we all had a lot to think about when we left. Uh, so I'd like to thank Kevin for his initiative in, in uh, getting that uh, started, and I'm glad we were able to put that on. Now we're talking about, okay, what, are the, uh, what's, what kind of follow-up can we offer? Are there programs that would be worthwhile for students or parents? Are there other programs that would be helpful for, uh, for our coaching staff, our health teachers, uh, health professionals? Are there any questions? Quick comment. Uh, Peter, I really didn't do much on that. Um, you and Keith and the coaches uh, and the doctors were the important ingredients in that, and I hope that we can look forward to seeing that type of stuff continue when it affects our uh, all of our students, whether they're athletes or, or not. I think that was a great start, and uh, I want to thank all of you for participating in that. Thank you. Questions or comments? Peter? Several Thanks. people have mentioned the play, and I did go and enjoy it. And I think that one of the things that I wanted to comment on was that, you know, always you see the parents and the grandparents at a play, but I was quite encouraged to see how many students were there to applaud their fellow students on. That was very encouraging. I think that's a big part of the atmosphere uh, that I've noticed uh, at the high school is that there is a good deal of uh, support for one another. Um, it, across, you know, whether it's uh, ex athletics or uh, the academics, uh, I think there's a good deal of support for one another. That's good. Thank you, Peter. The uh, middle school's principal re principal's report, Nancy. Thank you, George. Um, Peter, it's very nice of you to leave your notes up here for me to read, but I think we've already covered this material. <laughs> um, Good evening. Just a few quick items. Um, did want to let you know that our staff development days in November went very well. Um, the first day was a system-wide day. That second day at the middle school, we focused some more on our in-depth work with the learning results and are coming to a point where we're sort of ready to say, good, we've done that part. Now, what do we do with assessment, which was much of our focus on the first day, which was November 23rd. As Amelia already reported, we had a very se successful adventure at Camp Kiev. Um, it is very focused. The students were in classes from 9 until 3. 
But the part I wanted to share with you is that part of the Kiev experience is that on Wednesday, the parents are invited to attend, and there is a program for them. We had approximately 45 parents who attended the day program from 10 until 3, and then many of them were able to stay, but they were also joined by other parents, and we had about 85 parents for the evening program, and it went very well, and I think a, an excellent match with our efforts at partnering with parents to include them and inform them about our programming and what it is that we're trying to do with the young people that we work with all day long. So I was very pleased with the support and the interest that the seventh grade parents showed in the program. I know it wasn't possible for everyone to come, but we had excellent representation. Just to update you on a couple of things that we're working on, um, one of the goals that we have this year for the middle school is that we are looking at reviewing our programs um, that are accelerated. That would be our challenge language arts program and our accelerated mathematics program. We have a committee that will begin working this Thursday. We have two meetings in December, two in January, and two in February. We're hoping that will be enough to focus our work to review what our programs are now the content of the programs as well as the selection process and the appeal process. Um, look at the recent literature. We're trying to look at things from the last two years and then begin to say what would we like to do next? What do we want to add? What do we want to keep? Um, what are the things that we would like to have this program look like for students? So I'll be giving you updates along the way on that program. The other thing, um, in the fall, when we did our curriculum nights, we passed out course overviews to everyone. Um, perhaps you remember that learning adventure we all went through last year with the course overviews. They have worked very well for us. And we promised people that in the report cards that went home from the first trimester, we do updates. And we followed through with that. But one of our obs quick observations was that this is a lot of paper to go back and forth. And so one of the things we're going to try to do is to make use of our technology and our suggestion for the third trimester updates would be to put them on the website so that then people can go to the web. We know that not everyone has internet access at home. However, it is available through the public library. Um, anyone who calls and requests a paper copy, we will certainly make that available to them. But our students went home with report cards that were really quite thick. Um, some of the courses actually did have updates and things had changed a little bit and others did not. So we're hoping that what our plan is in the future is that certainly in the fall everyone would get a paper copy. Those um, course overviews would also be posted on our website and then throughout the year people would be able to go to the website to get the updates and once again as I stated anyone who requested a paper copy at any time we would make that available to them um, and we think that might be more efficient but I'm going to be talking about that through the parents newsletter and certainly if it isn't a good way to communicate we will abandon that idea and come up with the next best idea. Um, my final thing is that I think all of you received an invitation to our winter concert tomorrow night. Um, I know it's a busy time of year, but if any of you can drop by, we will be in the high school gymnasium um, because our performing groups are so large and our audience is so large that we don't fit in any of our own um, centers at the middle school. So we do use the high school um, gymnasium and we appreciate their cooperation and sharing of their space. Thank you very much. Other questions or comments for, for Nancy? I'd like to thank Nancy for sending out the team leaders' reports and also your faculty um, meeting reports. I found those to be most informative and look forward to receiving them in the future. Thank you, you certainly will continue to receive them um, as board members, and uh, I'm glad you find them interesting. I'm, sometimes the faculty isn't sure that my agendas are always that interesting, but it's nice to know that somebody thinks that they are. Thank you. Nancy, I just had a quick question for you. You had talked about a committee that's uh, going to be reviewing the challenge programs, the accelerated programs. Will that also include the results, um, results of in subsequent years, what, what the impact has actually been of those programs as, we, as these kids move into high school? Sure, and that needs to be part of what we would review this particular time as well, too. Um, we've gotten that in the past in a more anal anecdotal kind of way. Um, we'll be looking at that. And really what we hope to do is to get on a real procedure of where we're in a sort of a three-year cycle of where we review that program almost automatically um, every three years. We've been meaning to get to this for the last two years, and other things have pushed it aside. Um, but with some, cha some anticipated change in personnel, it's an excellent time to do it, and then to get it on a be better rotation, that would certainly include feedback from the high school, as well as input from um, 
Pond Cove. In fact, we have asked a member of the fourth grade staff to join us on this committee as well. Good. Thank you. The uh, principal's report from Pond Cove, Tom. Good evening. Uh, first, I would like to uh, officially welcome Marla Bono as uh, the new assistant principal at Pond Cove. I'm sure you've all met her before. I just want to point out that Marla has been here for a couple of weeks. She's busy learning names, mastering routines, and has already contributed in the classroom and in the halls and the lunchroom. So I'm delighted to have Marla with us. Uh, second, speaking of personnel, you will recall that Allison Hawks left teaching Pond Cove this fall to do that rather spectacular project with the, uh, I think it's called Sail Alone. It's the solo sail around the world. She was one of the, I think she was in charge of the education component. She came to school in the fall to show the third and fourth grade teachers what this would involve this year. And so we are still communicating with Allison in her formal role as the education coordinator. And last I heard, she was in Cape Town, slightly ahead of the crew. If you're in Pond Cove up toward the uh, beginning of the fourth grade wing, you'll see a world map there with the um, line drawings of where all the sailors are. So uh, people are really pleased to be able to do that. Uh, speaking of um, email and getting feedback that way, I didn't want to inflict one more formal survey on parents about what we're doing or not doing at Pond Cove, but I just asked their opinion about having the entire Thanksgiving week off, which was something new we had tried. Most of the responses came by email, probably got 15 or 20, and they're running highly in favor of the week off. So I appreciate people taking the time, and uh, not everybody is thrilled with it, but it's been a very positive response. Just to keep on your minds, one of our long-term goals this year was to look at looping, and we are sending five or six teachers off to a conference uh, uh, dedicated to that topic next week in Portland. They'll, they'll be back to report to the staff, and we'll probably be able to make some recommendations this winter and, and probably have, uh, if we decided to go, have informational meetings for you and for parents. There's a lot of enthusiasm around this idea, and I really want to compliment the teachers who are putting their time into it. The, the other big topic that we've been working on since last spring is identifying and filling gaps in our instructional support system. That is, how do we help all kids? Um, some kids get things more quickly than others, and I, I think I passed on to you this kind of a chart that has the current situation. Last spring, Sarah Berman and Becky Swift and I went around team by team to help people express their needs about what their standards are and, and what they need in terms of support to help all kids reach those standards. It, um, John, I'm not sure if you're getting our faculty meeting minutes. I hope you are. Good. Um, we devoted a lot of time to uh, at faculty meetings to to talk about this, and I guess we'll have a proposal for you pretty soon. Um, uh, finally, the, our timing for the snow is a little bit better. I guess I have to take the responsibility for that. We usually like to have the snow about 9 o'clock in the morning, have the kids get all excited and go out to recess. So I apologize to the children of Pond Cove for kind of having the snow a little late this year, but I think there'll be some on the ground tomorrow, and they can argue about Don't who. let them think there's not going to be any school. Oh, there'll be, there'll be school. <laughs> But it's always better to get excited when you can see it. it. It was just a little late today. Do you send faculty, meet, faculty minutes to everybody? Because I don't, I don't get them. I don't get them either. I might must be in the select group. Tom, I, I guess I so. Tom, <laughs> Mary Tom, last year you used to send copies for all the school board members. And, and now this year I just get one copy for the superintendent. Oh, oh I thought maybe we were just sending the one copy to John. Well, I right. give it to him after you read it. I'll share them. All right. I, 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 well, we've been emailing. Through on the email, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. And so they're, they're perhaps not getting it. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. If you want me to copy, I'd be happy to. But last year... They Don't you have enough to do? <laughs> no, I need right. something to keep me busy. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the offer. Other questions or comments for Tom? Thank you. Yep. Okay, we're going to move on to committee reports. We're going to start with the uh, Finance Subcommittee, and that's Keith. Uh, we met earlier tonight at 6.30 in the Jordan Conference Room. Uh, we signed warrants. Uh, we talked about a draft plan for the capital or the draft budget for the next year's capital improvement plan. Uh, currently, it's about uh, $15,000 over last year's figure, or somewhere around uh, 
three hundred eighty thousand uh, dollars. This is for the general maintenance of the buildings, uh, uh, continued improvement, upkeep, uh, things like boilers and uh, floor coverings, and keeping the the uh, the masonry up to par and so forth. Uh, that's going to be discussed more at the uh, joint meeting between the town council and uh, the school board. Uh, we looked at the number for the uh, proposed paths budget for uh, next year. Uh, I don't have that number immediately in front of me here, but I believe it's about $5,700 for uh, next year, which is still the greatest deal in town. Uh, it's it's going to be the last year that we have such a great deal for the uh, Portland Arts and Technology High School. Uh, they're going to change, and we're going to hopefully vote on this tonight, a, a change uh, the way that the school will be funded to, to closer represent our, uh, our uh, actual involvement in all of the community schools' uh, involvement in that, in PADS. Uh, uh, Pauline Poetry gave us an update of the renovations of the 1930s uh, basement in terms of community services. Uh, the word is we're still going to be done by Christmas, but realistically it might be the second week of January sometime in there. Is that? We don't have an official date, so the official date hasn't changed yet. Uh, but it is still under budget by some, uh, somewhere between thirty-five and $40,000 under budget. So that, that part is going well. Uh, we are going uh, at, at a future meeting most likely appropriate uh, some money for a feasibility study about uh, setting up a consortium of school districts uh, once the electricity uh, de deregulation goes into effect. There, there might be some cost savings there. Uh, we, we talked about a food service report. Uh, there's still about $7,500 outstanding uh, from uh, the student lunch program. Uh, if you're getting those bills monthly, please uh, send in your whatever amount those bills are for. Uh, we also discussed a little bit about Pond Cove and uh, some air quality and moisture problems that are currently being worked on. Uh, I guess there's one classroom that's been moved uh, for, for the interim as, as, as that gets looked into. Uh, but that is being worked on. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, the next committee report is uh, from the policy subcommittee. Um, that's Kevin. Last month, I had the opportunity to report on the October and November meetings, so I have nothing to report to you tonight. Our next meeting is Thursday um, at 8.30 in the conference room here. Some of the topics we'll be looking at is finalizing leave of absence and uh, adoption leave recommendations. Um, hopefully, we'll be looking at some special ed policies and uh, we have gotten a huge packet of recommended policy changes from the, the uh, Maine School Management Association that relate to uh, conduct in the schools, um, more or less. There was also a meeting of um, uh, the town, as I prefer to look at it, police department, fire department, principals of all the schools, guidance counselors, the superintendent, myself, uh, talking about the critical incident response policy and the administrative guidelines. And we will be uh, working on that on a continuing basis. And also, finally, uh, we will try and work out some earlier meetings um, so that the rest of the school board members may attend if they so desire. And that town committee henceforth is to be known as the safety committee. Okay. Okay, thank you, Kevin. Um, the next update uh, is from the continuous improvement team. And uh, like the policy subcommittee, uh, there's nothing new to update. Um, I provided the update at the last meeting. Uh, there is a reminder of the next meeting, which is December 14th uh, from 4 to 5 p.m. in the Jordan uh, Conference Room here in this building. That moves us on to unfinished business. Um, no. no. Update. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Beth, I'm skipping over you. Um, update on the superintendent search, Beth, sorry. Hi, there's just a quick update. We have had um, a total of 35 requests for applications. That would be from people seeing our ads. That does not mean 35 people have applied. They have just requested applications. Um, of those 35, 20 of the, of the requests have been from people in Maine, and 15 have been from outside of Maine. Um, and then for completed applications, that's ones that have been turned in, we have two completed, which is one from Maine and one from outside Maine, and four partially completed ones, and they're all from outside Maine. That's a little complicated, but um, it gives us a sense that our ads have been seen and the letters to superintendents and assistant superintendents in Maine have been seen we had a slew of ads running this past Sunday and will again this coming Sunday. The deadline is December 31st, and um, that's pretty much it. We met just before this meeting as um, a executive session to finalize the qualifications we're looking for in a superintendent. And the last piece I'm just going to put a plea out for is any other community members or teachers that are interested in serving on the screening committee. We would love to have you write a letter of interest to the superintendent search committee care of um, the superintendent's office. Uh, we will be selecting those people uh, pretty much probably at the end of December, first part of January. <coughs> Their services would be needed about January. I think it's about the middle of the month. It's about the 15th. Um, so we would encourage more people to apply for that. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call. And I've told the staff all I have to do is email. They don't have Great. to put a hard copy in the mail. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Beth. Um, there is no unfinished business, and so we'll move on to new business. Uh, the first topic under new business is uh, the high school graduation date uh, for, um, and it says June 1999, Nine. which it That's will be. Great. That's right. It's kind of funny looking at that. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, Peter, this might be something that, um, that we'd ask you to, to uh, speak to, at least initially, um, and, and kind of provide a framework around this topic for us. As you may remember at the uh, last board, at the October board meeting, uh, I proposed to you uh, a change in the graduation date uh, from Friday, June 11th, to Sunday, June 13th. The two main reasons uh, that I am requesting this change uh, have to do um, with the fact that currently with a Friday graduation, uh, we annually run into uh, a concern about whether the, uh, any, the athletic uh, uh, tournaments will conflict with uh, students participating in project graduation. Uh, each year that we've had it, uh, had graduation on Friday, we've had to worry about uh, whether teams would qualify for state tournaments or whatever, whatever the level was at that point. In this particular year, the concerns that I have are with the um, state finals in baseball and softball and the New England uh, tournaments in track and field. Currently, with the uh, graduation date scheduled on Friday, uh, if our, either of the, any of these teams or individuals uh, qualify for those tournaments, uh, they would uh, need to make a choice between participating in project graduation, which would follow uh, the uh, uh, graduation ceremony on Friday night, all Friday night and Saturday during the day and not arrive back until um, uh, the evening on Saturday or going to the tournaments. As they have said to me, that's not a choice. The, you know, they, would, they would go to the state tournaments, thus depriving them of, of the ability to participate with their graduating class in the project graduation. Uh, a move to Sunday avoids uh, that uh, problem. The tournaments would be over by the time we had graduation ceremonies, and uh, you know, they would be able to participate in project graduation activities. Secondly, uh, this is a... Um, uh, a district 
that has a fair amount of stability in the student population. Many of our students do go all the way through the system or at least start relatively early on uh, and, and move all the way through the system. Um, that creates a situation which is, which is wonderful uh, in that it's a, it becomes a, a true K through 12 celebration rather than uh, a 9 through 12 celebration in, in districts where there's a lot of mobility. Um, you end up celebrating as a high school. The students are looked at as, as products, if you will, of the high school. Here, you've got students that are, that are uh, uh, products, again, if you will, of the whole system. Uh, teachers that are involved in Pond Co at Pond Cove and at the middle school have mentioned to me that they, uh, they say things like, oh, this year it would have been fun to go because this would have been my first, this is a class that I first worked with when I started. Uh, currently, with the, with the way we schedule it on a Friday afternoon, um, those uh, teachers aren't able to participate. I think it would uh, enable uh, the celebration to be, the ceremony to be a celebration of the whole system. Um, I have, uh, after the meeting, uh, when you uh, mentioned that you thought that we should have a, a more public uh, opportunity to hear opinions, I did uh, send a letter that I believe you uh, have a copy of uh, to seniors and parents of seniors, advising them uh, of the proposal and the meeting. Um, I've received some response. Uh, I think you have copies of, of all of the responses, uh, the written responses which I have received. Uh, I think there are four uh, of those, all uh, strongly in favor of the proposal, and I received six uh, uh, voicemail messages, uh, all of which uh, indicated that they were in favor of the proposal. Now, as I've mentioned to uh, Kevin, uh, I don't know if that's an accurate reflection of the uh, total opinion. Uh, obviously, people that agreed might be more likely to give me a call rather than those that would say, Pete, your idea is awful. Uh, you know, they, they might not feel like uh, making that call. So I have received 10 responses, and those 10 uh, were, uh, were in, the, in the affirmative. Uh, I still believe very strongly that the, uh, uh, that the logic behind the change is a good one. I know that one of your concerns is uh, changing uh, now, once the uh, calendar was set, it is my uh, I have two beliefs about that. One, that uh, I, I, I've got to say that when we were setting the calendar, um, uh, I think we spent a lot of time on vacations and, and staff development days and those types of things, and I, I don't I didn't really look at the uh, setting of graduation as a um, as, as cast in stone. That was more well. That comes on the last Friday of the uh, you know of the of the normal school year before any snow days are added in. So it's the 11th. I don't think we we really stopped to think about it uh, a lot. We did talk about having it in a different weekend when we originally proposed. Uh, a calendar that began uh, earlier in August and we thought we were going to finish the school year earlier in June uh, than we had talked about a different weekend which also would have had conflicts. Um, um, there was a second point there that I just lost. Um, um, I, I, uh, as I say, I, I do uh, believe that, uh, uh, that it still makes sense. It gives families time uh, together uh, rather than having a, a Thursday night uh, senior banquet uh, where the, the seniors are going out on Thursday evening when maybe the family just came in on Thursday evening in order to be there for Friday's graduation. Uh, this gives families more time. Several people have mentioned that to me in conversations. Um, I think I'll leave it there and, and hear uh, if there are views from the public or board. Um, any comments from the from the board. I have a question. Peter, do you have any sense of the number of seniors who are potentially caught up in this conflict? Uh, I think uh, a very reasonable uh, uh, number would be uh, 12 to 15 yeah. uh, that have a very legitimate chance. I mean, you know, if we count all the seniors that are involved in all activities, it would obviously be much higher. But that, that really we could foresee a very legitimate chance of being involved in either the state finals as on a team or as individuals in the New England, uh, I think 12 to 15 would be people that have a very realistic chance of being involved. So that's about 10% of the seniors? Yes. Thank you. 
Keith. I think what you spoke about with the first revision of last year's calendar was uh, the graduation was actually scheduled originally for the fourth, perhaps. Uh, and uh, yes. Keith Weatherby made a pretty strong case against that. And, uh, you know, I think we, you know, uh, acknowledged that we needed to move it to get it out of the sports conflict. So it's, it's unfortunate it didn't work. Uh, yeah, the there are there there are two different weekends there that have uh, state finals uh, in different sports, and the uh, the fourth was definitely one, and the eleventh is the second one, and um, you know in retrospect uh, it, it would have been good at that time to say oh wait a minute let's and I th and I think Keith recommended it at that time we just didn't I I didn't realize that that had to be done right then I thought we had time to look see what the schedule would be and that type of thing and and so we didn't you know look at moving it to a Sunday right then we started thinking about it that was the first time we started saying oh maybe that would make sense to move it to a Sunday afternoon I, I frankly didn't realize that I was setting something in in stone when we at that point said well let's you know we'll leave it there for now so what you're proposing is to put graduation Sunday afternoon at two o'clock or whatever. somewhere in that neighborhood uh, project graduation all night Sunday whatever happens and all day Monday yes does, is that going to have some effect on uh, parental involvement for that Monday? For the project graduation? Yeah. Uh, the the uh, project graduation committee has assured me that while it does have an effect, there, there are some people that won't be able to do it. They are very confident that they would be able to, uh, to have a very adequate number of chaperones. Thanks. And by the way, uh, at the... Uh, uh, important for you to realize at the last board meeting, I wasn't sure whether this impacted uh, project graduation. They have at this point reserved both dates, uh, so we are uh, we are all right uh, in that way. Of course, we have to let them know as soon as possible which uh, which one is our chosen date at this point. Are there other comments or questions from the board, yeah, Jen? What is the scheduled last day of school? I have it. I'm sorry. I know Beth has a calendar, which is yeah. why I'm looking that way. Um, Friday the 11th is with no snow days, but that would be graduation anyway. They don't, okay, seniors don't have to have as many. And then the first snow day would be Monday the 14th. Okay. So if you had five snow days, it would be Friday the 18th. So system wide, it's the 11th. It always varies, but yeah, that's sort of okay. general. That's what I'm, okay. This particular weekend every year would make, se it would, it would make sense to have the graduation ceremony in this particular weekend, the projected last weekend of the school. That way, uh, if you do have snow days, uh, you're still, you know, within a week uh, of the end of school. Uh, and if you don't have snow days, you're right at the end of school. If you push it a, a week later, if you don't have snow days, it doesn't make sense to have graduation a week after the end of school. And if you do have four or five snow days, it doesn't make sense to have the seniors finishing up in <coughs> weeks before. So I think this particular weekend is the one that, that uh, each year we should always be shooting for. Uh, and it's my view that we should move to a Sunday of that particular weekend. No, I was just thinking that for some reason, and it must be in the past because of snow days, that they've always graduated before school's been out. So that's, that's the way I'm, they like it. Like, I'm sure. Like it, <laughs> no question. Uh, have you uh, contacted an individual or somebody to be your program, your keynote speaker, and will this have any effect if you change the date? They're, they're st the students are still in the process of selecting the speaker. Uh, in fact, uh, tomorrow morning they may be taking some, uh, some action on that, although I, uh, well, no, I won't. Uh, say, I was going to say I, I think that's not going to be an issue. But. Okay, another question. Uh, have the seniors been polled, uh, be given an opportunity to have input into this? Have they taken some type of a vote as to where they're coming from? how they feel that they would like to have a what date? Uh, not polled. Uh, I've talked with uh, several and mentioned to, it, uh, to them several times, uh, mentioning that this meeting tonight would be a good time to uh, express uh, thoughts. Obviously, the students that are on the teams involved have said to me that they really hope that uh, we can move it to the uh, Sunday, but I haven't sensed a strong um, uh, feeling one way or the other. Um, on this. I uh, have, you know, haven't had students come up to me and say, no, no, you, you really shouldn't change it. I have had students come up to me and say, yeah, I hope it works because uh, it wouldn't be a choice. I would definitely go, you know, with the baseball team or to the track and field or so forth. And the, uh, How about the but there hasn't been any polling. How about the gentleman that's in the audience that represents the, the high school? Has he been 
given an opportunity to express himself in reference to what his people have to say? Formally, there's been no, uh, there's been no attempt to uh, find a student in the uh, past that would be a good idea to uh, gather a poll, grab something from, which is where the majority of the students uh, are actually gathered from the end of the day. Um, it might clear up the issue more uh, to receive uh, formal opinion of all students, um, all seniors involved in the decision. True. That, would, that, would give, uh, that would give the sports players and the uh, non-sports players an opportunity to voice their opinion. Other comments from board members at this point? Uh, this is an issue that each year the board reviews and approves the calendar. That's why um, it was a discussion at our last formal meeting. Um, the board expressed the sentiment that they wish to um, seek uh, uh, some more information um, before um, taking what would be required, a motion by the board, basically, and to, to uh, change the calendar. Um, I know that there might be some public opinion that we'd like to, uh, to have expressed. Is there anyone who wishes to speak? Yes. Come on up to the podium, identify yourself, please. Uh, my name is Debbie Butterworth, and we have four sons um, who are have either, our oldest son, Andy, graduated from Cave High School in 95, and Jeff is a senior this year, and we have one other child in the high school and one in the middle school. My husband Frank and I do not want to see the date of graduation change for a number of reasons. While I'll admit that our first reason is strictly a personal one, our concerns regarding the date change go beyond our own family conflict. The conflict we face is that our oldest son Andy will be graduating from Dartmouth College on Sunday, June 13th, which, if the, the Cape graduation is changed, will mean that we have two sons graduating on the same day in two different states. Our family would then be forced to separate and both Frank and I would be missing seeing one of our sons graduate. This decision is traumatic enough for both of us, but our two graduates are devastated at the thought of missing each other's graduations. We have looked forward to these milestone events for our boys, and the thought of not having our family together to celebrate each event is heartbreaking for us. If the high school graduation remains on the 11th, it would allow us to all to attend Jeff's graduation and then get over to Dartmouth for all the ceremonies involved with Andy's graduation. However, our concerns regarding the date change go beyond our personal conflict and appear to be more of a policy issue for the school board. This date was set last spring by the calendar committee. The problem with the sports tournaments has been an ongoing concern, so this is not new information. In fact, the possible sports conflict was taken into consideration by the calendar committee last spring, and at that time it was still decided to hold graduation on Friday, June 11th. It seems as though the time to make the board consider conflicts is when the calendar is being created. There was op ample opportunity at that time with all the discussions and rough drafts circulated for anyone to provide input about the dates. The community has come to depend on the school calendar as published, aware that much consideration and discussion goes into each decision. Barring some unforeseen circumstances, this calendar should remain as voted by the school board, with changes considered for the next school year and implemented during the calendar creation period. The mission of the calendar committee is to take into consideration all factors, and if changes are allowed after the calendar is published, it will set a precedent for any other groups to come forth during the school year and request <coughs> day changes for their own interests. The second consideration being named as a reason for changing the date involves Pond Cove and middle school teachers being available to attend graduation, because as of now, the graduation time and date prevent them from being able to attend as they're still in their classrooms. This rationale is somewhat flawed, however, as an informal survey taken among the staff at Pond Cove revealed that their attendance would not be a deciding factor. As an employee of Pond Cove, I emailed all the teachers and asked them this quest these questions. If the time for graduation was after our school hours, would you attend? And if you did attend, would you be more likely to attend on Friday afternoon at a later time or on Sunday? Over three quarters of the teaching staff, 32 to be exact, responded, and the results showed that three definitely would attend. 10 might attend if the time was convenient, and 19 definitely would not attend on either date. Four felt the Sunday date would be better for a variety of reasons, while the other 28 definitely preferred the Friday date at a later time in the afternoon. So, please do not include the consideration of Pond Cove teachers as a reason for changing the date to Sunday.
To address the desire of the few teachers who would be likely to attend graduation, it was suggested in the future that we allow Graduation Friday to be an early release day, allowing staff and siblings time off from their schools to attend the ceremony. You may be hearing other reasons, pro and con, regarding the date change, but it seems to us that the most compelling one needs to be policy. The reasons set forth for a date change were known at the time the calendar was approved, and nothing has changed. We as a community often struggle with tough decisions in an attempt to be equitable. The only way to remain impartial in a decision such as this one that is so emotionally charged is to follow policy and tradition. We urge you to stay with your committee's original decision to hold graduation on Friday, June 11th. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. If you could identify yourself for us, please, at the podium. <laughs> Gee, I thought everyone knew who I was. Um, I have to address a few issues, though. If it snows tomorrow, Tom, do I have to go outside for recess? Okay, and I would like to take credit for changing the calendar day because I was the one that came up here and said, why waste two weeks? Why don't we put those two days on Thanksgiving week and just waste one? So <laughs> I'm glad it worked. Um, I'm here to say that I am totally opposed with changing graduation. I was here last year at the workshop when we discussed this issue on having it be June 4th. And I remember at the time, Athletics was brought up, but Mr. Weatherby addressed us as to the fact that he was quite sure there would not be any conflicts this week. June 4th, there would be conflicts. I have lived in Cape all of my, I'm not going to tell you how many years, but I was born here. There's been conflicts every year when it comes to graduation and sports. However, plans have been made with my family. We have relatives coming from, maybe it's selfish on my part, that may be attending from Germany who have made tentative arrangements and may not be able to change them. I have a son who, um, some of you know, competed last year at PASS and finished third in the state of Maine in his competition in first aid. If he competes this year and finishes first, which he has a very good chance, I've told, he will have to be leaving on Sunday, Saturday, to, to participate in Washington on Sunday. That would mean he has no choice but miss his graduation because this is very important to him. I have surveyed a lot of seniors, a lot of people, I have found no conflicts with anyone having to miss graduation on Friday. I have found three people who it would make a devastating effect if it's changed to Sunday. They will either not be able to attend their own graduation, they don't mind missing project graduation, but graduation is pretty serious and they don't want to have to miss it. I urge you to please leave it on Friday. I've asked teachers, several of them said to me, why couldn't we have a half a day on Friday? Or have graduation later in the day. We would go there. You have the faculty already in town. I am sure there are several faculty members that are not going to come back into town on Sunday to attend graduation unless there is someone that they specifically know and care about. They care about all the children, I don't mean that. But um, the other thing is, as Debbie said, the calendar has been set. The next thing will be someone will come up and want to change something else because of something else, because of some athletic thing. I am all for athletics, but this has always been the conflict. Another thing is I think that it leaves the kids wide open for partying on Friday and Saturday night. Um, I, I am afraid of this. They are good kids, but um, school's out Friday. <coughs> I'm not in school anymore. I think it's safer to graduate on Friday, attend project graduation, be back Saturday evening, spend time with your families, get your life together on Sunday, and start your new life on Monday morning. Also, I've talked to several kids, and they have been saying that they are willing to even maybe change their vote for project graduation. The original vote was to go on a Casco Bay Lines cruise and to the tennis racket at night. If this was the choice, and we went back to the kids and asked them if they were willing to change, there would be no impact on missing project graduation. The kids going to tournaments could attend part of project graduation. Their parents could pick them up, bring them home. If we are three hours or whatever it is away, there is no choice. You either have to miss it or you go, one or the other. There are other ways of getting around this, but I really hate to see any student have to miss graduation they can accept missing project graduation, but a lot of them can accept missing their own graduation. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else uh, who would like to speak? Yes. Good evening. I'm Angela Faraday. I live at 14 Channel View Road. My son Vincent is a senior. And it's difficult for me to address you because my good friend Sherry and Debbie, I think we agree just about on everything except this. My son asked me to come tonight because um, there are many things involved in this. One of them has to do with principles. And I'm going to use that word carefully. Both. <laughs> A-L and L-E-S. And the principal has a wonderful leadership ability for his school. He has had the courage to ask us even to think about awards assembly differently. He has asked us to think about an inclusive community, one that celebrates the accomplishments of all kids. Difficult sometimes because traditions are being juggled. My son Vincent asked me to come because we have a conflict, a serious conflict. He uh, plays in an orchestra that's going on a European tour on that Sunday. But he said, it's not about my personal conflict that should guide the decision. It's the principle of what is graduation. And if graduation means that this community will not throw away 12 athletes, then it has to be reconsidered. If in making the decision to include those young people who are always in conflict, always, those of you who have high school students know that it's a daily battle of balance whether it's the soccer coach, or whether it's the music conductor, or the biology teacher. These children are always making decisions every day. And it's up to the policy making group, and it's really confusing to me how this is a policy, but that's okay. I think as a board, you have the um, right and the legal mandate to set the dates. I'm not sure you set the days. I think you set the quantity. I don't think you set which day. So it's kind of a tough place that you've been put in. I, I appreciate the leadership that Jeff Butterworth gives our senior class as well. And truly, it's a wonderful thing to ask the young people their opinion. But the decision has to be made by the um, administrators in concert with the board. I think the principle that you were working on had to do with minimizing conflict. If there were a perfect answer, you wouldn't have all the emotions that you, you have here tonight. In helping to minimize conflict for 12 or 15 young people, you may cause it for five or six more. So that's a difficult decision that you have to make. The question I ask of you and the plea that I make is that we don't sort of galvanize forces to show whether or not the faculty will come or not. It's not their graduation. That's not important. And I would hate for you to give people a half day off just to do that. That's just not what it is about. It's not even about my day. It's certainly my son's day and all his, his classmates. Now, they made incredible choices this class, even last year when they were struggling with the prom decision. They made a decision as a group, and Jeff could attest to this because of his own integrity and the ethics that they stand by. When they were able to have a prom offered to them almost at cut rate half price on a Sunday, because one person, one person, whose religious beliefs would not allow her to attend, they unanimously said no. Those are the principles I'd like you to stand by. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to uh, speak from the audience? Yes. My name is Mark Earnshaw. I live here about 10 years on Highview Road in Cape Elizabeth. I have seven children, five of which in the system, so I know many of the principals and such. I have uh, Ashley, who's a senior this year, and I'd ask her to be here, but she was doing natural helpers or something with the high school. But we are also opposed to the uh, change. So I apologize for not sending Peter a letter, but I uh, wanted to come in person. And it's more personal than, uh, than principal, I think. But I think we, the last speaker mentioned some of the religious implications. And certainly, as I've tried to teach my children, that, that Sunday is a kind of a reserve day. And we try to have a different kind of activities. And the graduation, I'm not so concerned with, but it's the festivities around graduation that come in conflict with the teachings of our religious uh, sort of celebration of that Sunday. So I'm opposed to that change. 
for, the, for that purpose. Because my daughter, though we'd attend graduation, would then be discouraged from attending project graduation. I chaperoned project graduation last year, so I know the, uh, the fun it can be, and I hope that it will continue in, in that way to allow all in, to enjoy that Friday into Saturday, knowing that we will never be able to, to please all the many families that we have here. But I want to publicly voice the opposition to the change of graduation. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the audience who'd like to uh, address this issue? Yes. Hi, I'm Frank Butterworth. I live at 21 Macaulay Road. <clears throat> I don't know if it uh, cancels out because my wife has already spoken, if we each count as half, but uh, you've got a difficult decision <clears throat> in front of you tonight, and uh, I think follow following what policy you have previously established, which is setting that date, <clears throat> is what I would suggest you do. That would be my recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address this is issue? I think at this uh, point in time, I'd like to uh, get a sense uh, from the board members of, um, of what, they're, what they're thinking, see if they have any other questions. Beth? George, I'll just say um, I really appreciate um, Pete's looking at graduation and thinking about ways we can change and improve our high school. I would be happy to entertain all of those ideas and listen very carefully in the spring as we put together our next year's calendar. I guess I'm opposed to changing the calendar now once it's been set. Um, it's something we work very hard on in the spring and it is the school board's purview to set the calendar and that date is there. Um, so I'm happy to look at and study moving graduation for the future. I would say, though, since the calendar is set, we leave it as it is, and I guess I'm more disturbed if we would have kids missing graduation itself on a Sunday as opposed to athletes missing project graduation. And to me, that's a terrible, I mean, it, it's more numbers that would miss project graduation, but actually missing the graduation would be devastating, I think, for certain kids. So I would be for leaving it on the way it is and happy to entertain any ideas for next year and any changes and really support the work you're doing at the high school and the way you are looking at things. Appreciate that. Thank you, Beth. Other comments? I have a question. Jen? Um, <coughs> with the athletes, um, is that a major, a definite, uh, uh, it's, de it's definitely a maybe. Uh, it, no, it, w there are no guarantees. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, it so it's is only a potential conflict for the athletes as opposed to a definite conflict for the athletes. It's a likely potential. Uh, I'm right. sorry? But I mean, I'm just, it's a, a, likely. Likely. a likely potential as opposed to... Uh, it, that's always, it's always very hard to predict, uh, you know, a season. I, I think that it's there are a couple, of a couple of teams and individuals uh, that have very legitimate chances of, of going to that uh, level. I don't know whether Keith wants to give the odds. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no, I, I think I, it's... it's, it's uh, based on playoffs. So I'm sorry? Playoffs. Yes, it's based on playoffs. And those are always afternoons, mornings? Uh, in the playoffs, they would be during the afternoon. They would be uh, usually Saturdays uh, of the, uh, and, and depending, uh, morning or afternoon, depending, you know, they sometimes have games stacked up. If they've got shared facilities or if they're having it at different places, they might have them all in the afternoon. But they'd be during the day on Saturday, yeah, generally. 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock. Okay. How far away? Uh, Benz, they, they choose those that, uh, at you know, later in the year they set the sites. One, one uh, thing that would be important to realize, I, I share uh, Sherry's concern about uh, the celebrations that take place on the nights other than project graduation. I, I do think it's important to recognize that project graduation is an attempt to take care of one night. It's an attempt to take care of graduation night when, uh, when, when we felt that the uh, chances for uh, accidents are, are at their highest. Whether we have celebrations before graduation or as last year when we were coming back on the bus there were, from project, project graduation, there were five or six parties that were being discussed and, and where people were going. Whether we have it before or after, it still scares us. It scares me. 
but that's not an issue. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, it, it can happen, you know, a week after students graduate or a week before. I'd like to um, continue to informally poll the, the, uh, the board and get the sentiments of whether or not a change in graduation is uh, going to be supported. John? Yes, John. I would uh, like to see the, the date remain the same. I concur with Beth in reference to the, the uh, calendar committee putting this together. I do recall the discussions that we took place that Keith mentioned, and we thought we had all the bases covered. The parents have made their plans. I think in the future we, sh we could take this under consideration for a Sunday, but I think for this coming year it should remain as, as stated on the calendar. Thank you. Um, to my left, uh, any, <laughs> any sentiments to my left here? Yes, Kevin. First, I'd like to say that I'm always impressed by Peter and the other high school personnel's ability to say, oops. Mm -hmm. We didn't think about something, and it affects our students, and therefore be willing to go out for change, as opposed to when they say, oops, it affects us, we'll take the heat. And I appreciate that. <clears throat> Secondly, I'd, I'd just like to repeat what Peter has already said for the record. If anybody thinks that the date of the graduation will stop parties in this town, I suggest you go take a ride on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights every night of the week during school. The parties go on continuously. Um, may not be huge numbers of people, but the parties happen regardless. I get the sense that um, this could potentially affect up to 10% of the senior class. I wish I had the uh, student input on this to help me make a decision because I do place a premium on what the students think. Uh, but I would be inclined to go with the change. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Keith? I think it's really unfortunate uh, that our schedule is causing the situation for that, those, that group of athletes. Uh, sounds to me that if, if, uh, if we did institute a change now, that that is just going to change the group of students that are going to be uh, adversely f affected. Um, so there's not a great solution to this. Uh, I think we need to stick with our process of the calendar committee and the two-month process that that takes to keep the calendar, uh, uh, to, to set the next year's calendar. We take that seriously, and I think we uh, shouldn't try to change that in the middle. Thank you. Jennifer? Um, well, I've never thought Friday's a great day for graduation anyway, and would really like to see Saturday afternoon, but that doesn't seem to be a choice either. Um, but I guess I don't feel that, I mean, if we change the date now, we eliminate that choice that some people have to make, but we create a choice for other people to have to make. And that doesn't seem fair. Um, you're just, as Keith pointed out, changing which group has to make the choice. Um, and perhaps there could be something so that if those students would have to make a choice, I mean, there's the potential that nobody has to make a choice. Of course, knock on wood that nobody in sports uh, hears me say that. Um, but if there's a way to work project graduation so that that choice is minimized for the kids who do participate in sports, as somebody said that part of it could be something that's done in town so that um, you know, they could still go to it and, and go to their sporting event at the same time. Uh, anyway, I think I would have to not go along with the change. Thank you. Marie? Um, I think this is very difficult, and I'm very torn. Um, because I, I hear Peter, and as long as I've been on the board, um, Peter has always gone after things for the kids. Um, and, and when I look at, you know, the 12 to 15 students, which is 10% of the class, could not be part of this, um, that's really concerning. But, but that's only a potential. I mean, we don't know if that's really going to happen. 
And, and I would like to sit here and, and support Peter because I think he does great things. And, and um, we all hear wonderful things about the high school and the communication that he has with the kids. And he's always, both he and um, Dwight, are in full support of what the kids want. Um, but I do believe that we are switching off one set of students to uh, <coughs> another set. And, um, and I have a difficult time with that um, in thinking that the calendar has been made and it has been set. And um, we can talk about this next year when, when it's fresh and we can make the decision from the beginning um, rather than trying to change it in December. Thank you. Um, it's clear that a, a motion for a change in the calendar is not is not going to carry. Um, uh, I would just uh, echo the many of the sentiments that you've already heard. Um, uh, Peter is doing a terrific job, and and um, we have in every way supported him because of the terrific job that he's doing. In this particular instance, um, it really becomes emotional. Um, it's not policy per se. Um, setting a calendar is not necessarily policy. Um, it's something, it's a process that was done, it was completed. Um, I think that uh, what I heard from Beth is probably the thing that would sway me the most, which is um, someone missing graduation versus someone missing project graduation. I would really need to um, not have them miss the graduation. So um, I would um, also not support a change. Um, again, we still love you, Peter, and we're going to support you in every other way. But, uh, but this thing is, this obviously it's not going to carry. I mean, is there some way? We need a of three people in the high school for next year. <laughs> is there some way to accommodate? No, I don't think to so. To change the, project the graduation? Part of the reason the project, the project, Part of the reason that the project graduation uh, people had asked for an earlier decision uh, by the students uh, back uh, a month and a half ago was that they felt that they had to stop changing the possibilities and come to a conclusion. So I, I don't really think that there's uh, uh, that it that it uh, does well to go back and revisit the vote that was that was taken. They've, they've changed uh, plans a couple of times, and I think they the project graduation committee feels a need to settle. And, uh, so how is it set right now? Uh, they, the students would be, uh, we will uh, cement the Friday evening uh, project graduation leaving. Uh, by the way, it is not, uh, well, I shouldn't say it's impossible, but we cannot move it to later in the afternoon because what, one of the things that parents have said with the Friday graduation as it is, is that when graduation ends at 3.30 and, and then by the time, you know, people socialize a little at the event itself, there's almost no time for any family gathering when they get home before they come back to the buses at about 7 o'clock. So we can't move it later uh, in the day. Uh, or I don't think I'd want to try to move it later in the day. But uh, then they will come back at 7 o'clock uh, approximately, uh, leave on the bus. We go, I, the site hasn't... Uh, I think it's probably three hours away like it was last year. I don't know if we've changed sites. Uh, that would be the, the first night. Um, as Mr. Earnshaw said, we all sleep heavily. Uh, uh, and then the next day is when the activities, the rafting and canoeing and hiking uh, take place. So the activities take place during the daytime. Uh, and it is, you're right, it is a function to a certain extent uh, of the uh, I guess growth in project graduation, not the growth in the numbers necessarily, but the growth in the in the in the trip. It used to be that it was a, a local thing, and and you finished. Sometimes it went all night. Sometimes you said, "Ah, oh, at two o'clock or three o'clock or four, whatever it is, we'll uh, we'll cut it off." But it has become a larger, more of a trip, uh, more of a trip uh, and so then that does cause some of these uh, some of these conflicts. So that might be something that we'd want to look at also for the future is whether it. Uh, whether whether that should uh, should we should continue with that or bring it closer excuse me closer to home mm -hmm. 
I want to say that I, that I appreciate uh, all of the uh, vocal support, but th this, uh, I, I want to make sure that you understand that this was um, in, in no way personal. Uh, and one of the things I had said to Debbie when I came in is, this is awful. To, I mean, if there were a family that I would try to twist everything around and make it work somehow, uh, it would be their family because of the support that they give to the school. And it's not a personal thing. It was just my feeling that uh, we could solve a situation by, uh, by uh, making the change. I understand the reasons. Uh, and uh, that's not a problem. Thank you. Jeff. Just in light of uh, the recent development here, um, I, I believe as a student that we would be able to go back to the senior population and possibly change the location uh, of project graduation. I know right now it's set for the rafting, which has gone on for the past two years, I think. But the other option was using a party boat by, uh, of Casco Bay Lines and then going to the tennis racket uh, to hold the rest of the ceremony where the uh, participating athletes would be able to be retrieved from the event and driven home to get their sleep and get to their, uh, get to their competition. Uh, I think that the option is still open that we would be able to go to Casco Bay Lines and to the tennis racket. I know that the tennis racket is owned by Jody Sadiloff, who is the mother of one of our seniors, so she would be more than open to the change if it was, a, if it was offered up as a possibility. Uh, so I would like um, to say that we may be able to accommodate all uh, parties, uh, both those potentially missing graduation and those potentially missing project graduation, by establishing another location. So. I, think that, I mean, that would be the best of Mm, Both worlds. Absolutely. So we may be able to do that within the next couple of days uh, to find a consensus and certainly to find out if the option is available. I think the board would be interested in, um, in, in hearing um, how this all turns out. Absolutely. I'll make a report of it. Thank you, Jeff. All right, thanks. Um, I'd like to move on now to um, second item of new business, consideration of the superintendent's nomination to athletic fee for the winter, 98-99, we're also looking at a co-curricular and a second athletic position. Right. The athletic positions, I have two nominations. One is Mary Ann Doss as assistant indoor track coach, and she is a volunteer coach. Uh, Chris Brunette as middle school swimming coach, and he is a level three coach. Do you want to do co-curricular? Sure, you want to do co-curricular? Sure. Oh, sure. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. Jennifer? I was going to do the co-curriculars, but I can stop if you want. Oh, we do them all? At the same yeah, we'll do, we'll, let's okay. do them all. And I have two co-curriculars, uh, Literary Magazine Advisors, Hannah Jones and Susan Giffen. That's at the High School English Department. Is there a motion? <laughs> Ask for the name of the second person in reference to the athletic position. Chris Brunette, Middle School Swimming. Brunette? B-R-U-N-E-T-T. -T. Thank you. She's a graduate of the University of Southern Maine, 1972, did graduate work at Idaho State from 91 to 92. She's had extensive coaching experience, having coached a number of swim teams for the past nine years, and she's currently an assistant coach for the Coastal Maine Aquatic Swim Club. She comes highly recommended. Very impressive. Is there a motion? I move we accept uh, the superintendent's nominations for the uh, stated athletic and co-curricular positions. So a second, John. Any further discussion, questions, issues? Then a vote. All those in favor? 7 0. Um, the next item is uh, consideration of propo proposed revision to the Constitution and the bylaws of paths. Portland Arts and Technical High School is funded primarily by the Portland School Department. The sending schools. Cape Elizabeth and most of the area schools um, send the students there to partake in a ver variety of arts and or vocational courses. And when this was originally started, um, the state was really paying for this and the sending schools along with Port Portland School Department were paying only a prorated share of capital equipment purchases and new program costs. So typically, as over the years as the funding formula has changed, the amount of money that Portland was putting into this school to subsidize, basically subsidize nine or ten sending districts continually increased. And ultimately the Portland City Council 
suggested to the Air School Committee that they might want to take a look at this and make it a little more equitable. And that's what this is all about. Um, rather than funding a prorated share of simply um, capital equipment and new program, the sending schools are being asked to fund a prorated share of the expense to operate Portland Arts and Technical High School, which makes, quite frankly, perfectly good sense. Uh, to give you an example, for next year, we would be operating under the old formula, and that would cost the school in total, the school department in total, $5,700 or about $275 a kid, and you're not going to get a bargain education like that anywhere. Um, under the new proposal, it would cost us potentially $75,000, of which we would be reimbursed by the state so that our net out-of-pocket cost would be $18,000 under the same set of circumstances, um, which is still, when you think about it, a bar is a bargain because we cannot ever afford to replicate any of the programs that PASS provides uh, to our students. And we typically have 20, 25 students over there, um, many of them, if not most of them, who are college bound in some fashion or another. Um, the change in the Constitution calls exactly for that, but it is predicated on one important item, and that is the uh, State Education Department uh, being allowed to reimburse us immediately for our out-of-pocket costs, as opposed to the typical formula, which is you get reimbursed two years down the line. Under that circumstances, we would be out um, approximately $80,000 a year for two years, and we would always be out $160,000 approximately with that reimbursement flowing through uh, to keep that pretty steady. Um, so this change, the ultimate change, is predicated on the legislation which would allow immediate reimbursement to the sending districts. Actually, we get off in the scheme of things rather easily um, for uh, a school district like Gray New Gloucester, they're talking about literally four hundred dollars to $500,000 out of pocket for a two-year period. And that, uh, I don't know if there are any questions. Um, any clarifications that are needed on this? John. If I understand correctly, that the Article 6, the six that's in shade will be eliminated. Is that correct? That's correct. And the new Article 6 will be Section 1A through H? That's correct. So that's all inclusive. Those are all the amendments. Yes. Okay. If there is nothing else, then I would offer uh, no other questions, okay. comments. I would like to offer a motion to the board that the school committee of Cape Elizabeth ratify and approve the amendment to Article 6 of the Portland Arts and Techno Technology High School PASS cooperative agreement in the form recommended by the PASS advisory committee and presented to this meeting as Exhibit A and that a copy of the proposed amendment be incorporated into the minutes of this meeting. Second. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Other questions, comments? I guess not. Someone's stretching in the back. Okay. Um, I have a quick question. Yes, go ahead. Um, if we were not to approve this, are we not part of PATHS? Is that what happens? Or? <laughs> That could potentially become the case. Uh -huh. It would certainly not be the case next year, but um, that could potentially be the case. So we, so we have the option to withdraw if we wish in the future. We don't have we, to. I continue. believe we probably always have the option to withdraw. withdraw. You're only paying, on, you'll only pay on a pro rata basis, right. no matter what. Right. Just that your pro rata basis is going up. It's going to go up. Right. This, this specific motion is ratifying and approving the amendment. As a member of the, yeah, yeah. As a member of the group, right. participating group now. Right. Um, any other questions, comments, 
Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Uh, that's it on this, Kevin? Um, I think we, yeah, that's that on item. Okay. C. We can do the next one very quickly. Yes. Uh, the, the budget amount for the school year 99 2000 for paths is, for Cape Elizabeth share, is $5,711.97. And if you approve that amount, then that, that is the amount that will appear in our budget. And that, is, as Kevin has said, that is based on the old formula. Right. And that's based on an enrollment of 21 students. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the $5,711.97. Second. Jennifer, <clears throat> um, questions, further discussion about this matter? Seeing none, all those in favor? 7 0. Um, <coughs> the last um, is a consideration of the superintendent's request to um, enter executive session to discuss a legal matter. Um, before we do that, uh, the dates to remember for the future school board policy subcommittee meeting is happening Thursday, December 10th at 8.30 in the Jordan Conference Room here in this building. Special School Board meeting, January 11th, um, 1999, 6.30. And that will be in the Jordan Conference Room. In the Jordan Conference Room. Okay. And the topic is to select uh, eight to 12 superintendent candidates for interviews. Um, followed the next day, January 12th, 99, by the uh, Finance Subcommittee, 6.30, in the Jordan Conference Room which is immediately followed by the regular school board um, meeting at 7.30 in the council chambers. Um, is there a motion to, yes? How about a reminder about the January 4th meeting, which, which is the combined meeting of the council. Uh, January 4th meeting, a combined uh, meeting with the town council. council right. Yes. Need, um, uh, a motion to con to uh, move on the superintendent's request to exe enter executive session to discuss a legal matter. So moved. Um, okay. Um, the superintendent's uh, pointing out that we need to be more um, specific. Uh, the legal matter, uh, specifically the Ridge case. So moved. Um, second by Marie. Dis I will recuse myself from the executive uh, session with a request that if you come out of executive session into public session and if you have an item on the agenda, either I will remain in the building for that period of time or if I'd appreciate it, if you have the courtesy to call me at home and I will return for that vote. Okay, thank you. Um, other discussion, questions, comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Seven, seven zero. Um, and uh, that concludes this meeting this evening. Thank you very much. <clears throat>